and, uh, <clears throat> and took pictures. And we left uh, Pyongyang. And this time, because father's hometown is a small countryside, rural countryside, so there is no airport nearby. So the North Korean government provided two gigantic helicopters, military use helicopters. Each has 14 seats, yeah, helicopters. The first helicopter was for father and uh, our party and uh, uh, some you know, the delegations from the uh, North Korean government. Second helicopter was for media. Even media followed all the way. And uh, as we flew out of uh, the Pyongyang airport, I felt, even Dr. Bak mentioned that, people are waiting the second coming Messiah will come in the uh, in cloud, right? <laughs> but our Messiah homecoming was in helicopters. <laughs> we, landed, we landed on the, the playground of the elementary school there, but hundreds of hundreds of people around the, the entire county just came out and just waving and watched. This was the biggest event in their uh, county there. They never saw this. Yeah, because nobody came home in helicopters like that with, you know, the government escort. And even there, that rural countryside, when father arrived, Mercedes-Benz was ready there. <laughs> they always, they think that's the, the top. So, <clears throat> and father was welcomed, greeted by, again, father's uh, sisters and the relatives there. And uh, we drove to uh, father's uh, a nephew's house and uh, took pictures and uh, it was nearby uh, and then uh, father was driven to his uh, house original house where he was born and he grew up uh, originally father's house had kind of u-shaped house was u-shaped or like a like a square shape like this but then uh, the during the Korean War according to them uh, the bombers came and just destroyed all the wings and the just main part, one straight uh, house, four room, four room house uh, was still uh, just intact there. It's there. So think about the feeling. We visited there and we saw the house and we stood in, in the yard there. Father went into the room and sat there and he prayed. And Father's comment was, this house used to be very big, but now it's small. <laughs> because when father was a really small child, he thought the house was big. But now father <clears throat> is grown up and big. The house looks rather small. You experienced that, right? And uh, when we uh, went into uh, the, the living room, the room there, father said, father pointed out a small kind of window on the wall, a, a typical Korean uh, window on the wall. You open it and you can see outside. It's a small about this size. Father said, this used to be pretty big because I used to come in and out of this small window. <laughs> but now it's small. It looks small, but when father was a small child, I think he could have done it easily. <laughs> so that kind of, you know, he made that kind of comment and he prayed there. And uh, we took picture and uh, so many memories came to father's mind. Father's mind. But father couldn't enjoy the, those so much because as he said at the airport, uh, father wasn't there just for homecoming purpose, just for visiting his hometown and uh, seeing the relatives. But he was there uh, for, the entire, uh, for the sake of uh, the entire Korea, reunification of Korea. So even then, so many of his relatives just cried and cried. Oh, father all calmed them down, calmed all of them down. And uh, father kept telling them, don't cry, don't cry. If, suppose father cried, what happened? You know, so. And uh, we took so many pictures and a couple of other houses were still there. Father's uh, cousin's houses, uh, they are all almost you know, and now destroyed, but they are still there. And there was one particular well in front of father. Father had a lot of you know, stories about that well too. And many memories came through, came to father's mind, the mountains and uh, one thing I figured it out by myself was uh, <clears throat> there was about cliff about this high. Cliff 
but cliff yet just uh, mud, the red color mud, solid mud, uh, soil. And uh, uh, father used to tell us the story about uh, catching a particular bird called uh, kingfisher, a small fish, and uh, has a long, uh, uh, long beak and uh, but it's a, a little bit bigger than a sparrow, uh, but uh, really slim looking. A kingfisher. This particular bird dig a hole there you know, on the cliff so the people can't touch and they lay eggs there. The father used to share with us the, the story of ca uh, catching the uh, eggs from those uh, holes and sometimes catching those fish because they are so much high and father had to make a, you know, steps to climb up and uh, they are flying so fast. All those stories I heard, heard over and over and I looked, uh, stand, uh, stood in front of father's house. I looked around if I could see that particular cliff. Here it was. It was about, uh, about uh, 1,000 1, yards, a kilometer away from father's house. There was that cliff. So in my mind, that must be the cliff. Father always played around. And later on, I asked father, is that it? Father said, yes, it is. But uh, it became much lower now because of the you know, Korean War. Yeah, war destroyed the entire area, so it got flattened a little bit. But still, I could see that. And all kinds of memories. Also, father saw the rice paddy, which father's family used to own and uh, grow you know, the rice there. And they, father you know, got out of the car and stood there and took some pictures. And all those emotional moments were there. And uh, <clears throat> uh, father had a lunch in the father's cousin's house. Now they moved out of that house. Father's house is not really occupied now. Uh, they moved out of the, that particular village is almost now vacant. And they moved out and uh, settled another village someplace else about uh, a, uh, a mile away from there. And uh, before that actually, before uh, he went there to have lunch, father went up to see father's father and mother's uh, gravesite. We went up there. And uh, <clears throat> it wasn't far away from father's original house. Uh, <clears throat> the, the grave was there. And uh, they even, the communists, the, the government, uh, put the tombstone there. You know what, one thing. Though I was grateful that they did it, since father arrived in Pyongyang, for one week, even before that, for one week, several hundred people were mobilized to build a new road to the, the you know, father's original house. They painted the entire house. They even uh, built the front yard and the steps. And uh, everything was done new. The, the, the road, about a couple of miles long road was built even. And uh, it was just brand new. Yet, uh, when we went there, the, even the front yard was muddy because they put new dirt and they tried to fix everything newly. And uh, when we went into the room, I accidentally touched uh, one of the poles, then paint was still wet. <laughs> uh, they really tried to uh, give a nice uh, homecoming, well, a good homecoming, good feeling to father. So they did a lot. <clears throat> and they even stretched out themselves to even put the tombstones in front of father's father and mother's graves, uh, grave there. Put father and mother's, uh, the both in one, one grave uh, they put together and the tombstone uh, has both names even. The date they passed away and the children, you know, of course father's name, including father's name, father's brother, uh, two names in the, in the back and the one side, uh, father's Father's, uh, the date father's father passed away. On this side, father's mother passed away. You know, all this tombstone was done. A couple of other uh, graves there, father's relatives. Yeah. <clears throat> Even there, all the sod on the grave was newly put down there. So if we walk, the one side of the sod come up like this. But, I mean, they did, they did try to decorate and to clean and to you know, arrange neatly to present to the father. <clears throat> but one thing in my mind, I felt so sad because uh, even before we left, 
one day before we left from Pyongyang, we told those uh, North Korean officials that we uh, want to have some uh, even rice cake or some fish or some food when father goes to visit the, the gravesite besides uh, flower bouquet. <clears throat> but I don't know what, what the reason is exactly. It's not their uh, customary, I think, in North Korea anymore. Somehow, nothing was prepared except two small flower bouquet. So when I saw father and mother just putting two small, about this long flower bouquet on the tombstone, that was all. No even fruits, no rice cake whatsoever. I felt so sad. But uh, I couldn't do anything. There was no store or whatsoever, no supermarket there. So I couldn't go and get anything. So I just felt sorry, you know, really sorry there. And, uh, <clears throat> and after that, uh, we had lunch at the father's cousin's, the elder cousin's uh, our nephew's uh, house. And uh, father's, it was a beautiful, beautiful scene to watch. Because in that uh, old small room, they put the table there, and father and mother, father's elder sister, father's younger sister, and father's sister-in-law sat together, and father's nephew. On this side, Dr. Park and I, and uh, of course, the, the county, head of, uh, head of county uh, communist party, and the woman, head of women's, uh, the, the communist party, woman, uh, women's organization, two of them sat at that table. Yeah. Again, you have to understand the <clears throat> North Korean uh, regime and the society. They must supervise everything happening. So they were afraid that there may be some comments made by fathers, uh, sisters, and the family, uh, the folks uh, about their system, about Chuche ideology, about uh, you know, the living situation they are in to father without them hearing. So they, without being invited, they came and sat there. Yeah. And they watched everybody doing everything. Yeah, so that was, that was sad to see. But it was beautiful to watch that. I never heard of anybody saying that to father. Uh, father's uh, younger sister called father Oppa. Yeah. Oppa means my elder brother. And uh, obviously, there is not enough food there in the, the countryside around there. So though they prepared really delicious, really like a party, like a big table, you know, with a lot of different dishes, we could see, even for that luncheon, the, entire, the, the county level, I don't know where, but they brought uh, a professional chef there, and they prepared everything there. <coughs> But I could see a few items locally done there, like rice cake, which I enjoyed most, and uh, uh, the corn on the cob, the, the typical one the father used to eat a lot there, he said. And in fact, that kind of corn was kind of familiar food for them. So even though there are many different dishes, they, they couldn't even touch. They didn't touch. They ate only corn, and they offered corn, one, uh, one uh, corn on the cob, to father. Younger sister said, Oppa, this is what you used to like very much. So please eat this. We have a lot. They, on purpose, they always say, we have a lot. You know, when I ask them, please eat, this is delicious, this is delicious, they said, we can eat later. We have plenty. We have plenty. Because these people are watching there. They can't say, I want to eat it. <clears throat> it was that much, uh, you know, tense moment. But anyway, so father ate about half, and father gave it to back to her. Now you eat it. Then she ate a little bit more, then she said, Oh, I have more. I will eat later. You eat more. You know, back and forth. It was just beautiful. And anyway, there also, uh, our true mother brought a lot of gifts. Like, uh, it's not too expensive uh, in Korea in here. Just uh, sweaters and, uh, you know, Korean dress uh, fabric and this and that. Too, three or big full bag full of gifts and you know, gave them and some gifts to those uh, uh, government officials who sat there and to watch everything and father gave them yeah 
you get, you get this one. Our expensive Christian Bernard watch, you receive this one and don't bother them. You know, that's what Father meant, I guess. But Father was nice to give them. They were so happy. They didn't expect that. So they just stood up and they received them. And uh, after that, I don't know what happened to all those uh, gifts. But anyway, we gave them a lot. I had some doubt in my mind that they would be able to keep everything they received. So I had certain things in my own bag. So because I was sitting with uh, father's uh, sister-in-law, the, the government official sitting on this side. So under the table, <clears throat> I gave what I brought to her like this. <laughs> I don't know if it worked or not. Anyway, uh, by the way, they happen to be the woman's stock, stockings. You know. I didn't know I was going to North Korea, so the morning I left from my home, I told my wife, I have some feeling that I may need some uh, gifts which uh, Chinese people or you know, some people, those uh, poor country people don't have. So my wife said, this is all I have. But she gave about 15 uh, women's stockings. So I carried them all the way there and I gave them there. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> by the time we left from that house from luncheon, I took that uh, the corn half eaten by father and I, I brought it out and one of the uh, people in the room I don't know who was at uh, oh no no we have more this untouched one take this one this one but I said no it's okay this one is okay and I mean I took it because father ate there and they shared it together and half still left so I brought it home but anyway they thought I liked the corn so they tried to keep something as new one but anyway I brought it and uh, Another thing, you know, I was in tears was that when we visited the gravesite, father's elder sister just burst into tears uh, and uh, touched the grave and said, uh, telling her mother, said, mother, mother, until the day, the moment you passed away, you always called your son. Then he, she called father's name. The olden time, uh, when father was growing up, the name was uh, not the Sun Myung, but the Yong Myung. That name, old name, she called him. Your son came back, so please wake up. Please come out of here and greet your son. You know, she was crying and crying. That was uh, the moment I cried too. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> around 3 o'clock again, we got in the helicopters and they came back to Pyongyang and uh, we didn't know where we were going again then at the airport we were greeted by uh, Chairman Yoon and the Deputy Prime Minister Kim Chairman Yoon's wife another woman leader uh, in North Korean government high official four of them waiting there and we got off the helicopters they said follow us so at the airport directly on another plane this time a light plane, about a 50 passenger plane. And we were taken to some place, but they didn't tell us where we were going. But we were flying about uh, 45 minutes. And uh, <clears throat> we landed in Hamhung. Hamhung is, uh, if Pyongyang is here, uh, Hamhung is on the right hand side. It's about, uh, about 200 miles, 150 miles uh, apart. Landed in a small airport, Hamhung. And then we were driven to another guest house nearby, about 40 minutes or so driving distance. We were taken there, and there were houses there. Uh, so we, we stayed there that night. Then uh, late that night, they told us that uh, Even after Deputy Prime Minister told uh, Premier Kim Il-sung's office that meeting between Premier Kim and Kim Il-sung is impossible. This is, this is going to destroy many people's lives. So we canceled. So the office level, yes, it was done. But when Kim Il-sung got reported about it, and Kim Il-sung said, who said Reverend Moon can't see me? No matter what you people say, I will see him. On top of that, prepare lunch. I want to have lunch with him. 